в лайві. Так, стається, ми вже вийшли в лайв. Let's check it out. Так, ми на сторінці в лайві. Точно на Київ. Definitely on Київ пейдж. And on Tallinn page as well. So, hello everybody. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Maria. I am an event manager at Lyft 99 KU Hub. Uh, Lyft 99 is the most vibrant startup community in Tallinn and Kyiv. And we also run co-working spaces in these cities. And today uh, we are having an event with uh, our community member, Pavel Antono. Uh, who will uh, speak about uh, performance advertising and social media, which is actually a super hot topic right now. So, Paul, he, here's your word. And please, also at the beginning, tell us more about yourself and what do you do. Sure, sure. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of STT Pool Company, um, just allow me to extend uh, a warm welcome to you, to everyone, of course. And today we are going to cover this like interesting stuff about the performance advertising in social media. Um, I'm going to share with you some interesting tips and tricks on how to boost your business on Twitter and on Facebook, of course. We are going to cover both platforms like um, the Facebook is the most efficient one and the Twitter is most uh, receptive one because the audience uh, behavior, of course, and the, the content um, consumption is absolutely different. So um, a few words about me, uh, a quick introduction. My name is Paul Antonov. I'm head of mobile performance unit at HTT Pool, uh, official reseller of Facebook and Twitter. And we are a global reseller, of course. The, uh, the common direction of my expertise is performance, uh, performance advertising, of course. A uh, few words uh, regarding HTT Pool. HTT Pool is official um, Facebook, um, Twitter, LinkedIn, Quora, Reddit, and Snapchat partner and reseller. Now we have a 30 plus offices across the world from Austria to Hong Kong, uh, 600 plus employees, and we are like, the global reseller. Recently, um, recently uh, we, we adapt our like uh, presence uh, across the world. And we, we added like a few markets in Asia and we added like a few markets in Nordic region. And we become like an extent uh, our presence as an um, as a Facebook representative, as a Facebook reseller, and uh, as, a, as a Twitter reseller as well. So now we count uh, 45 plus markets. Uh, we have like 20 plus uh, partners. I mean, like media agencies, and uh, 600 plus employees like across the, the world. So HTT Pool is like uh, the real like global uh, reseller. The most important uh, thing that I'm going to cover like um, here that the HTT pool is not uh, the agency. So we are not like the agency and we have definitely another like a business model. So how it looks like in practice. Uh, basically, we provide our services for big clients, for big businesses, absolutely for free. We, we are not going to charge our clients. So it's absolutely different model in contrast to the agencies. Um, we have like this unique opportunity and, and unique position on the market uh, thanks to the partnership uh, with Facebook and with Twitter and with other like uh, global networks. And our expenses uh, basically uh, basically covers by, by, by big like, uh, platforms like Facebook, Twitter and so on. The main like purpose that, that we aim, of course, um, we, we are going to become like the extension of marketing department of our clients. Uh, with the main idea to boost like their business up and to scale uh, their ad campaigns up, of course. So we are like fully involved 24 uh, hours, like seven days per week into like the business and try to do our best uh, in terms of the performance advertising, of course. So uh, regarding the, the geography, uh, we are official reseller, as I mentioned before, on uh, Balkan and Baltics region. Recently, we end up the, the Asian markets. Uh, regarding the Twitter, we are the uh, biggest reseller of Twitter. We cover like C region, Nordic region, CS region, and so on. The uh, most interesting thing that HTT Pool has uh, the different performance teams. 
uh, this like the the pods, the units, uh, which cover all all activities for the clients for the clients. So we do like this stuff from from the uh, planning to uh, scaling in terms of the campaign management. Uh, it's called like hands-on approach when we launch the campaigns, when we optimize the campaigns, and when we scale the, the campaigns. We have uh, this this like teams uh, in Riga, Moscow, Kiev, uh, Mumbai, and Hong Kong, of course. Uh, this is my team, and we we are based in Lift 99, and we are the part of Lift uh, 99 community. And I'm really happy and proud to be a part of Lift 99 community, of course. This is like the team um, who like managed the the clients from whole C region, from like uh, Nordic uh, Nordics like region partly. Of course, uh, we have a clients from the United States and so on. So we are working like globally. Um, last year, we were the part of the big uh, event um, uh, which Twitter organized for the resellers, and our team, uh, uh, and our team like uh, got this this awards uh, from Twitter, and uh, uh, we were like recognized as the best performance team in EMEA region, uh, Europe, it, uh, uh, Middle East, and Africa. So um, every single year um, we like participate in, in some events uh, from Facebook and Twitter, where the giants uh, shares all updates around the industry, around the, the platforms, uh, around the uh, the uh, the some like um, tech stuff, of course. And today I'm going to share with you some some technical points, uh, some some features which uh, Facebook and Twitter provide for like advertisers. So the the keynotes which we are going to cover today. And the first one is how to get the full potential on Facebook and Twitter to maximize business re business revenue. That's mostly related to whole like business vertical. It's absolutely doesn't matter. Uh, we are talking about e-com business or mobile application promotion. It spreads across. Uh, the second one, how to connect uh, how to connect platform features and modern performance approaches to get incremental value. Uh, today, I'm also going to share with you some case studies, and uh, uh, I'll share with you the the case studies for um, mobile application promotion and e-com, of course. The third one, communication strategy, the key to success, how to develop and implement. The the common thing here that the and the setups, the preferences, the targeting options, uh, all, all like this stuff doesn't determine the result. And here's like the main, um, the main blocker for some advertisers, um, how to come up with, with the proper communication strategy because the creatives, the messages, and the communication strategy in general, of course, uh, that's like the lion's uh, share of your success. Uh, on social media, and uh, you have to consider the platform features. I mean, the the Facebook and the Twitter itself, and uh, to adjust your communication strategy based on the on the product, uh, based on the product features, of course. So uh, let's uh, let's do like uh, the following. Uh, I just want I just want to, I just want to um, you guys please uh, type in, into the comment section uh, where you're from and. Uh, Please share some some information about the businesses you work with. That's that's like really important for me because um, uh, uh, today I have an opportunity to adjust like my presentation to your needs, to business needs, and uh, just to be uh, just to be uh, just to be like more efficient in terms of the in terms of the stuff which I'm going to provide. Okay, so please type. Um, in the comment section, where are you from, and uh, please describe like your business, and uh, it will be like really helpful. Helpful. So, what is the performance advertising about? That's like the main thing which I'm going to cover today, because we are mostly uh, involved into this stuff. And basically, uh, like historically, uh, we have like these two verticals. The first one, this um, branding. Branding and awareness campaigns, and the second one is like performance advertising, of course, like performance vertical. If we are talking about the um, media buying, like in general, and, and awareness and branding campaigns, that's mostly related to the big brands like Coca Cola, like Nestle, Nike, and so on. Uh, 
those guys who um, who I who are able to buy markets. So when we uh, launch the, the awareness campaign, the main the main like metric, the key metrics, the key guys will be the frequency and the reach, of course. Uh, how many people uh, we can reach in in the audience sample and uh, what what the frequency like, will be and here is like uh, the the main the main the main question for those advertisers who do like all this stuff and uh, uh, those like our advertisers are mostly oriented to, to these metrics like reach impressions and frequency and then they they um, they make the brand lift just to just to recognize the impact and just to determine like the impact of the of the advertising in general the second like important uh, uh, part is the advertising uh, is the performance advertising of course uh, the the vertical when we when we we measure uh, all these useful metrics as uh, purchases cost per purchase cost per registration cost per install and so on and that's and that's like a um, really crucial thing for business especially for for those uh, businesses who i um, who like which want like to scale up their project and it's absolutely doesn't matter which market you 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 aim for and and that's like the great opportunity to measure like the funnel flow the customer journey flow and to determine the return on ad spend and to determine like your revenue and to determine the real impact uh, of the advertising uh, and how it you know, impacts uh, your your like uh, business in general of course performance advertising is about the management development analysis and measurable reports like return on ad spend cost per purchase cost per trial cost per install and so on when uh, uh, i put here management uh, i just like uh, want to share my personal my personal experience how to manage like these processes and that's not about the the targeting option that's about the communication with the client and that's about how we uh, how we percept this this like partnership um, basically our team uh, fully involved like in, in this like processes and we uh, and we try like to deliver uh, as much value as possible and to do it like properly we just have to withdraw like ourselves uh, from our shoes and to and just put our uh, ourselves into the shoes of our customers. That's that's like a really crucial thing in terms of the management, of course. Uh, in the, regarding the development, development that's like a really interesting thing when we have to develop some communication strategy, some technical stuff, some uh, maybe uh, some tracking uh, some tracking stuff and so on, just to measure the performance properly and just to explain the real impact of the advertiser to our clients. The analysis, uh, the analysis is like the key uh, to success when we are talking about the performance advertising because uh, everything like uh, should be measurable. And uh, uh, here is we can see uh, we, uh, we consider like the measurable results like raw CPP, CPT, CPI, some some uh, other useful actions inside of the funnel and inside of the customer journey. I will explain to you later how it works in practice. So how to get full potential on Facebook? Let's let's start let's start uh, from Facebook at the at the uh, the main platform, of course, because Facebook has a lot of free inventory, a lot of audience. Facebook has modern um, prediction algorithm, and uh, all this stuff in bundle like works pretty well, and uh, the Facebook itself. Is the platform which uh, really well like designed uh, for business needs, and um, today we are going to cover some some stuff around the Facebook. The first one is optimization and prediction algorithm, how it works. And the second one, advanced analytic tools. The third one is the um, philosophy of this platform, because uh, Facebook, in contrast to Twitter, is like mostly look at me platform when when people when people share some, uh, some, some personal stuff, of course. In contrast to Twitter, when, when uh, audience on Twitter, uh, it's like uh, they, they, uh, they observe like what's going on uh, in the world and they, they, the content consumption is absolutely different. And of course, it's about the, the scalability because uh, uh, Facebook has like a lot of active users 
uh, especially on the top and the top markets like United States, United Kingdom, uh, Canada, and all uh, um, countries from like tier one, of course. So Facebook prediction algorithm. The most like important part, uh, which is hidden under the the Facebook performance. And uh, before we start with this like stuff, with this uh, communication strategies, with the targeting options which Facebook provides, I'm gonna uh, start with the Facebook Pixel, the tool which provides an opportunity to measure the results and to optimize like your results. Basically, that's a simple uh, script, like JavaScript. And the everything that um, you have to do is to install like this, this script on your website. Uh, you can use like data layer or you can use GTM like Google Tag Manager and install like this, this like uh, this like script on your website. Uh, what are the benefits? The first one is like Facebook Pixel uh, allows you to measure the results of your ads, better understand the, the, the effect of your ads by measuring what happens when people see them. The second important part, optimization process, which is based on pixel data. So the, the pixel basically uh, transports the data from your website to your like Facebook ad account. And the third one, it allows you to run retargeting campaigns and to collect like your website audience to use it uh, uh, in your like, in your needs. I mean, like to cover the, the, the business needs when you when you want to launch the retargeting campaigns just to uh, just to like uh, get some incremental value in terms of the retargeting activities of course so that's how the uh, the basic uh, funnel looks like just imagine that's that's like the funnel and uh, before uh, before you start you have to you have to trace all uh, users behavior or on your website or in your app if we I'm going to cover like every article. You should uh, install the, the SDK. That's like the same stuff as, Fa as Facebook Pixel, but uh, that's mostly designed the mobile application promotion vertical, of course. And um, if the funnel uh, looks as follows, the first step is like search, view, view content, initial checkout, and purchase. So the, the Pixel provides you an opportunity to trace each. Uh, final step separately, and that's like really important because you can uh, you can uh, you can collect the audience of each step and then use it into your, your like retargeting activities, retargeting campaigns. With, with the main idea, just to drive, just to push your traffic through the funnel uh, to the uh, main goal, to the purchase, of course. And uh, the most uh, interesting thing that uh, Facebook Pixel provides you an opportunity to uh, to transport some variables to transport some additional data about your your like uh, your purchases your like uh, some registrations or some other like events and um, you can extend this this like uh, event event script and add up some um, some uh, some additional parameters of course like value like currency like content id like content type and so on and uh, basically it allows you to uh, to uh, see like all funnel inside of your of your like facebook ads manager and that's like really important thing and that's about like the, me the measurement process it's about the optimization process of course uh, as you see on the screen like it takes me just to the next slide uh, you can see the um, uh, the numbers in terms of the uh, quantity and quality and uh, we can count the number of purchases we can count the cost per purchase we can count the uh, return on ad spend and we can count the revenue that's how the performance advertising works in in reality and uh, basically uh, facebook pixel helps helps us uh, to make it happen of course and uh, that's like the basic uh, dashboard uh, which which uh, uh, which allows you to manage these activities and to manage like all uh, data measurement like process 
um, in terms of the, of the of the performance advertising activities on Facebook. The same situation with, with Twitter, with Snapchat, and if you are going to run your ads on on Twitter, uh, so Twitter provides you the script which is called a like Twitter tag. Snapchat uh, provides you the the same script and so on. And basically, whole performance advertising industry is based on the uh, on the measurement on the on the measurement process, on the optimization process, on the scaling process. Then and and so on so the optimization models which uh, facebook provides to advertisers the first one is like cpm and optimized cpm uh, let me like briefly explain uh, what the difference between the cpm bind type and the between the optimized cpm bind type um, if we want to reach uh, maximum potential of your audience sample, we have to use like CPM model. That means that the, the algorithm works without optimization. Uh, our like main purpose uh, just to just to reach uh, as much uh, users in, uh, as possible in the range of this like audience sample. The second uh, the second like model, which is called like optimized CPM, and here we go in terms of the, of the performance advertising activities. Because uh, that's about uh, click optimization, that's about uh, uh, purchase optimization, install optimization, and so on. When the system optimizes uh, impressions towards purchases or towards registrations or towards trials, and so on. Uh, how it works for, uh, from the technical perspective, from the uh, uh, from the uh, the prediction algorithm side. So every user on the on the platform basically has uh, a, uh, a characteristics a bundled. So the 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 platform knows about our behavior like everything uh, about the 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 content uh, which we we consume on the content uh, on the platform about the 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 sites which we visit and so on. And that's and that's like. Um, uh, really good opportunity, uh, which allows the system search when, like the, the system search for uh, similar uh, characteristics between those users who have already completed the target action. In short, it's called like lookalikes in dynamics. When the system optimizes your impressions based on the data, uh, based on all the past data, when someone uh, made a purchase on your website system just uh, just try uh, just tries like to grab like this data and to make like full analysis and um, uh, then then uh, the system source the impressions uh, in the range of this audience uh, sample to those people who uh, are most likely to buy or who are most likely to install like your app or who are most likely to uh, to make uh, to make to make a trial and so on, and basically you know, Facebook requires 50 conversions per week. That's like really important information. 50 conversions per week to optimize your ads uh, your ad set like efficiently to optimize your ads efficiently. But if um, the system um, grabs the data the data faster. And the uh, whole uh, audience, like bundle, has the similar characteristics. That means that uh, Facebook uh, uh, Facebook can uh, optimize your like your uh, your impressions, even if you have less the um, conversion uh, conversion actions, even if you have approximately like 40, 35, and so on. That's that's like really important thing that uh, you have to consider just just to take it into account. But basically, uh, in average, Facebook requires like 50 conversions per week, and the optimization uh, data stores uh, on the ad set level. That's that's like pretty pretty uh, important part. Uh, and again, like uh, if you switch off like the ad set and then. Um, Run it like in the range of, of the of the of the months or, or in uh, in the range of the of the year. That means that uh, the system starts to collect this data from scratch. I mean to collect the optimization data. That's that's like a really important part. So how it looks like um, from the technical perspective, you see that when when the system stays in, in the range of the learning phase, this like uh, this um, orange lines orange range, 
you see that the the costs um, the, and the and, and the cost per um, the cost per results like fluctuates widely here. Why it happens? Because uh, the system uh, uh, tried to uh, tries to get like optimization data. It tries to understand uh, the uh, the audience sample and tries to understand how to deliver how to like make this distribution properly. Then uh, after the learning phase finishes, you see that uh, the uh, the uh, the cost per results become stable. That's that's like how it works in reality. Um, with the low volume, like up to up to like 100 bucks, like uh, 100 bucks per day, and that's how it works on, on the scaling process. When we spend on the uh, on the advertising, approximately like 10k per day, bucks like 20k bucks per day, 30k bucks per day, and 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 so on. That means that uh, the system works efficiently, and it absolutely doesn't matter. Uh, how much money uh, you are ready to put on the table? I mean, you are ready to put and, and invest uh, into like your advertising. It, it could be like 100 bucks, or it could be like 10k bucks per day. That's that's uh, absolutely doesn't matter. And if you understand uh, how the algorithm works and how the optimization process uh, looks like, that means that it's absolutely uh, it's absolutely doesn't matter uh, how much how much uh, uh, money you're ready to put into the into the Facebook pocket. So uh, efficient budget distribution, that's like the second important part which Facebook provides. And this like the modern feature, the fancy feature, which Facebook uh, uh, released like in 2019. And it's, uh, it's called uh, uh, campaign budget optimization or CBO. So how, how it works, just, just a brief like explanation. Uh, when the system determines like the, the opportunity of each hypothesis separately and based on the performance of each headset, based on the, on the performance of each uh, hypothesis, uh, the Facebook serves impressions and the Facebook serves the budget unevenly based on the performance of each like uh, ad set separately. And you see that the lion's share of your budget uh, in this in this like uh, in this case uh, uh, distributes to the to the ad set with the lowest uh, conversion cost. That's uh, a really important thing. And uh, Facebook, this is like uh, one of the most efficient platform in terms of the optimization. And that's about uh, automation process, of course. You don't, uh, you don't need to, to allocate your spend between your hypothesis, hypothesis uh, hands-on. I mean, like, you, you, don't, uh, you don't need to use this like hands-on approach. Everything that you have to do, it's just to help, uh, to help, system, uh, to help system work like, efficiently. That's, that, that's all. Uh, you have to put like your budget, you have to, uh, to come up with the targeting, you have to come up with the communication strategy, and all this stuff should be done by Facebook automatically. That's, that's like, that's like uh, really, really important. Facebook Dynamic S, the another like important stuff in terms of the performance. Uh, it, allows, it allows you uh, to personalize your ads, of course, and uh, Dynamic Ads uh, automatically promote your inventory to people who have taken an interest in either your website or your app or um, elsewhere on the internet. Uh, that's uh, all about uh, automation process because the, the impressions and the, the, delivery, um, the delivery of your ads is absolutely automated. And here is like the, uh, the really important uh, point in terms of the, uh, of the Facebook uh, as uh, an advertising platform because Twitter doesn't have such uh, such kind of of, uh, of personalization. I mean, like the the dynamic as uh, Snapchat and other like platforms, they also don't have like this stuff. But Facebook, uh, Facebook provides uh, an opportunity to the advertisers to use these automation processes. I mean, to deliver the dynamic ads uh, to your audience with the main idea to push your. Uh, your audience through the funnel. That's about the retargeting activities, of course. And that's about how to, uh, how to add some incremental value, how to increase your revenue, of course. Because uh, on the top markets like United States, United Kingdom, Australia, and so on, the acquisition, the acquisition really, really uh, expensive. 
And uh, if you want to scale your business up, you definitely have to have to buy the, the acquisition traffic. Uh, it's worth it. Uh, it matters, and and of course, uh, and of course, uh, you have to consider that the retargeting in this case, uh, in case if you if you put a lot of money on acquisition stage, the retargeting is a really crucial thing uh, from the from the uh, unit economy perspective, of course. So Facebook Analytics, the most efficient tool, which allows you uh, to work with the data samples. And uh, that uh, allows that allows uh, you to segment uh, your audience based on the on the previous data which you grabbed like before, uh, and uh, you can create unique audience samples. For instance, you can create the the audience sample uh, which uh, consists of those users who made a purchase more often than like 90%. Or you can create the audience um, a sample um, for like uh, those users who made the purchase uh, greater than one 100 bucks or greater than 1K bucks per, per month and so on. So that means that uh, you have an opportunity to create the audience sample uh, and to target the, the solent audience, of course. That's that's like really a really crucial question, and, and that's like a terrific question: how to find like the 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 solent audience on Facebook, how to find the solent audience uh, on other like social media platforms, and uh, basically Facebook provides you an opportunity uh, to analyze your business data, like first-party data, and then. Just imagine you have an opportunity to create like lookalikes based on your like uh, precise and your like unique audience samples. This this uh, that's approach which is called like data driven approach, and we definitely use it in our like advertising activities on Facebook, of course. The second feature which Facebook Analytics provides, uh, which is called cohort analysis. This is the perfect tool to understand the customer's behavior, the retention rates, and uh, if you run the campaigns for mobile application uh, vertical, like it absolutely doesn't matter. It, it, it could be like gaming vertical, trading, crypto, and so on. Uh, the uh, cohort analysis um, shows the potential of your, of your business, like in, uh, in some like perspective. And uh, Facebook Analytics, uh, this is like the modern tool which provides you an opportunity to uh, to recognize some linear like dependence between the the uh, the audience quality, between like the conversion rates and so on, and uh, to understand how the how the audience use like your project, uh, your product in general, of course. The the case study, which I'm going to share with you, uh, that's like related to Ecom Vertical. And uh, it's called like how to increase revenue via Facebook ad campaign structure and can scale. Uh, 500K e-commerce case study. And I'm going to show you how like all this practice, which I shared with you before, how they work in practice, how they work in reality uh, and how Facebook can like improve your current performance and how uh, Facebook can boost like your business in general. So input data, just uh, on the kickoff stage, I'm gonna share with you the, 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 the input data. This is like Ecom Vertical, Beauty and Care Ecom Shop. Uh, top markets, of course, like United States and UK, UK markets. The initial return on ad spend 1.16, but the client's KPI uh, was uh, 2.0 uh, plus, of course. That's like the the crucial metric you know, when we measure the performance uh, for the e-com shops return on ad spend. That means uh, that if we put uh, into the the advertising like 10 bucks uh, and get back in revenue like 20, that means that the return on ad spend uh, will be like two, like 2.0. That's like the quick explanation. What does it mean return on ad spend? If you don't mind, the acquisition campaign structuring uh, for the testing phase. So basically, we use like different targeting options, different uh, targeting like bundles, and the Facebook pro provides you uh, a few options 
to use like uh, uh, interest, behavior targeting, lookalikes, like uh, lookalikes technology. Of course, it's like really, really uh, efficient and that, that works on Facebook and it worth it to try, like lookalikes. And the custom audience, I mean, uh, some, some, some lists of your users, of your uh, existing clients, uh, of your like website visitors and so on. So you can you can use like all this stuff in targeting. But on the acquisition on, on the acquisition uh, stage, basically we use like interest, behavior, and lookalikes, and that's how the uh, the structure looks like in reality. Uh, you can you can see it at the screen. So it takes me to the next slide, and I'm going to show you the retargeting structure for ecom. There's uh, the, the basic ecom uh, funnel, like main page, uh, view category, view content, uh, add to cart, check out and purchase. Uh, in, in, the yellow, in the yellow color, I just mark and highlight the, the uh, dynamic product ads. I mean, like the, the dynamic ads, which uh, is like designed and well designed for, for like retargeting activities, of course. So what has been done from our side regarding the retargeting? Uh, basically, we use like the extended version of the retargeting activities. Uh, uh, we uh, um, we adapt like the the cross sell and upsell strategies just to just to get some incre incremental value, of course, and just to just to increase like the uh, the the volume, just to increase the revenue. It works, and it works it to try in terms of the dynamic ads, because that's like the unique feature uh, which you can implement in your like advertising campaigns. Uh, and the second important part regarding the communication strategy that you don't need to use the, the same creative uh, for the whole like website audience. You have to change the communication, and you should be relevant. You have to be relevant uh, um, for uh, for each like audience sample. Uh, it depends on the on the funnel on the funnel step, of course. And uh, the main idea and the this like brilliant stuff when uh, when you have to develop the communication strategy that you have to develop the different creatives, the different messages. Uh, uh, which like are related to the funnel step, and when the user moves through the funnel, the the system changes the creatives and the system changes like the messages uh, based uh, based on, based on the funnel step. That's like crucial thing, and uh, uh, that's uh, uh, something important that you have to understand in case if you want to launch efficient retargeting campaigns, of course. Uh, so before, after, just to explain uh, how the performance advertising works. Uh, before uh, the kickoff stage, you see like uh, return on ad spend 1.16, average uh, spend uh, approximately like uh, 3k uh, British pounds. But on the kickoff, on the kickoff stage, on the on the um, uh, pre-launch pre or testing phase, we. We got um, return on ad spend uh, 3.52 and spent uh, 33 like k uh, British pounds, which is like 10x growth. Uh, even if we uh, considering that fact that it was like the the initial stage, like the kickoff stage. Then, if we understand that something works well uh, on some market, of uh, of course. Uh, we try to extend uh, our mm, our like uh, success and to extend the presence on the markets. And basically, this uh, this like uh, this approach, uh, which is called like uh, uh, scaling process uh, by Geo, where when we see that uh, the uh, the advertising works well in uh, in the United States. Then we have an opportunity to spread it to Canada, or we have an opportunity to 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 add like uh, the, the the United Kingdom. The, that's that's like how it works. And this uh, we started um, in this case, like we, we started the the new market expansion and uh, uh, added up the uh, the United States. We started from the UK market and then added the United States. And you see that the uh, uh, return on ad spend like was absolutely stable, uh, 3.85. But 
we doubled our like pacing, our spend, uh, almost like uh, 70k British uh, British pounds, and then scale it up and uh, got uh, almost uh, half million bucks in revenue uh, with the return on S uh, on ad spend uh, 2.91, which is which is uh, really good like uh, index. Uh, in terms of the of the of the scaling process, and considering like the the, the scaling process, which uh, which we we started like before, and you see that the the pacing the pacing uh, increased like from three k to one hundred fifty k British pounds, and the the revenue the revenue is almost like uh, half million bucks. That's that's like how the performance advertising works uh, in practice, how it works on the prospective markets. How it works like in the United States, Canada, UK, European markets, Asian markets. Uh, by the way, the the Asian markets they they are really solvent, especially uh, Japan, um, Korea, and so on. Uh, and uh, that uh, that basically like uh, thanks to the the technologies which Facebook uh, which Facebook provides. I mean the Facebook pixel, the optimization processes, different targeting options, different uh, technologies in terms of the uh, the data driven approach. I mean when when we when we uh, drill down this the data samples with the main idea just to come up with the with the uh, lookalikes and so on. And uh, Facebook uh, again, that's like uh, one of the most efficient platforms uh, to boost your business and to uh, and to leverage like the, the the opportunities, of course. A final conversion uh, rate is almost like ten percent, and that's uh, due to the uh, dynamic ads, of course, because dynamic ads works like extremely well on Facebook, uh, and uh, the results. We've got like uh, more than uh, 21k purchases. The cost per purchase is average like uh, 7.29 British British pounds. Spent is almost uh, 151 British pounds, and the revenue is almost like uh, half million bucks. Because here is I've put like the the, the revenue in pounds because the the client was from from the UK. Okay, so the the kickoff position when we started with this like project you see in the screen and like basically it takes me to this slide just to visualize it for you how the scaling process uh, looks like and we started with the with pacing I mean with the spend like 3.5k and just scale it up uh, up to up to almost like uh, half million uh, uh, in the range of one quarter that's that's like pretty pretty important thing. Uh, which I forgot like to mention this uh, in the range of like one quarter. Okay, then uh, moving on, just uh, guys, uh, please type something in the chat. Please type uh, if everything is clear. And just uh, just give me some feedbacks. Uh, I just want to understand that everything goes well. And let's move to Twitter and. Um, First and foremost, I'm going to share the philosophy of Twitter, and because the Twitter, like basically, absolutely, absolutely diff different platform in terms of the content consumption and in terms of the users, like perception, of course. And uh, Twitter is uh, uh, is about like what's happening in the world and uh, what people are talking about. That's that's like uh, really really interesting statement here, and. Uh, uh to consider the that fact uh, that uh, facebook and instagram they are mostly uh, uh mostly designed to this like uh look at me look at me perception look at me platforms when people share the their personal stuff their personal opinion on something and so on but twitter that's about the observation that's about the uh, uh the the observation, of course, and, uh, and that's about the um, the technical stuff, the technologies, because people want to consume the content which is like mostly related to the like uh, top persons and in tech in industries like Elon Musk, 
like uh, such companies like Apple, for example, like Facebook and so on. And just uh, uh, let me let me explain you that your most valuable audience are on Twitter when they are most receptive. And what does it mean? That means that the Twitter has 1.3 billion uh, active users on the platform. Of course, people has like two two uh, two different uh, types of of inventory. The first one, which is called Map Mobile Audience Platform, that's like the uh, the uh, the most uh, the most expensive inventory, of course. The second one, which is called like Tab Twitter Audience Platform, that's like the part of uh, Mop App like inventory, of course. And uh, uh, I just uh, want to share with you some uh, some case study. Uh, how to promote uh, the mobile application on Twitter. That's a really interesting case uh, in terms of the product vertical, of course. Uh, this is the simple, uh, the simple weather app. Just imagine that you uh, need to, to, to monetize the weather app. Uh, that's, that's like absolutely insane because uh, everyone has the weather app on your uh, on your iPhone or on your like Android device that's absolutely doesn't matter and just imagine that you are the manager of this project and uh, you need to to monetize this this like weather app you have to to conquer uh, for like market share and uh, you have to compete with this with this like Apple Apple apps uh, Android like apps I mean like uh, uh, in the situation uh, when uh, every user has this app by default on the on the on the mobile device, but this this app which is called like uh, No Redder, uh, it has some some specific feature. This this app notifies the user if something happens uh, in terms of the weather conditions. I mean some storms, some hurricanes, and so on. And uh, this problem. Um, uh, this problem uh, is really actual in the United States, and you know that. And uh, like uh, last year, me and my team, we just put our heads together and uh, try to figure out how we can promote this app, how we can like boost this, this product. And uh, what we realized, like first, how to get like uh, full potential in the hurricane season uh, for this app, we, we realized that the the demand is going up when something happens in the world. I mean, when 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 the the storm happens or when the when the hurricane happens and so on. We just uh, uh, we just analyzed like the trends. You can use like the Google Trends or or some like other apps um, like App Any, the another soft which provides you an opportunity to check like the 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 world like trends in some in some vertical it could be like financial vertical or some gaming vertical and so on and um, uh, last year we faced uh, two like big uh, huge like hurricanes like really really big uh, hurricanes in the United States one of them which is called like Hurricane Barry and the second one Hurricane Dorian and you see how the conception is going up in this like given periods. That's like the, the number of impressions and that's like the number of installs. And you see that uh, that's like increased like significantly in the range of this period, of course, up to 50K installs per day in the given periods. That's why uh, we decided we decided to adjust our communication strategy and to decide uh, and we decided like to adjust to adjust our, our like marketing activities and advertising activities based on the weather conditions. We we just we just started to trace uh, what's going on around the world. We just started to trace uh, all this all this like weather stuff across the world. I mean globally, and uh, when something happens in the United States or in Japan or in Korea or in some uh, other Asian countries, it absolutely doesn't matter. We uh, just start, we just start to promote like this product. And then uh, uh, and here's like the, the, the most important thing, how to come up with the, with the communication strategy. Uh, the first thing that uh, you should be fast and uh, you should do it like really, really faster. Because uh, basically this 
this like um, this period lasts maybe maybe seven days, maybe like ten days, but not greater than than like two weeks. That's why you you have to be ready to uh, to come up with the right communication strategy and of course with, with the right targeting. And Twitter provides uh, the opportunity to use like keywords. I mean those keywords which people uh, which people like uh, uh, use in their like tweets, in their comments, and so on. And uh, and again, considering the uh, the the platform feature that the Twitter and the platform for observations and the targeting options uh, are also aligned, and of course uh, Twitter provides like the unique targeting options. Basically, Facebook doesn't have such targeting like keywords, like uh, conversation topics, like uh, some some uh, TV shows and so on. Twitter has really extended targeting options. And um, in, the, in, the, in this period, uh, we use like precise targeting based on the use, user behavior. We use like keywords, of course, because that, that's like that's like uh, laser laser like targeting, you know. And uh, uh, that uh, slide like demonstrates you how uh, how the management process uh, looks like. Uh, first and foremost, we have uh, keep strongly focused uh, on the key weather events and hurricanes, maximize the volumes and efficiently uh, efficiency, of course. Uh, in this like given period, we have to remove budget limits because if the demand is going up, that means that the revenue is is going up uh, on the flip side. That's that's like the 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 terrific uh, thing, which uh, which we like realized, and. Uh, Basically, that's a, uh, that approach, uh, which is called like situational marketing, when we adjust our activities based on the given situation. Uh, in this period, uh, we have like shift to twenty-four like seven optimization and scaling approach. Because when we uh, work with the big budget, like up to ten k per day, twenty k bucks per day, or maybe or maybe um, even uh, even like uh, greater, like 40k per day that's that means that we, we have to be fully immersed into the into the management process so this is the communication strategy and you see that uh, this this like slides directly demonstrates you how how the communication strategy looks like and uh, we tried to uh, to come up with the with the with the relevant and with the uh, with this like personalization in creatives uh, we just put on the creative. Uh, you see that uh, it uh, it was like the the video creatives, but also we use like static images. But the video the video creatives work uh, historically like uh, in in these particular cases historically uh, work like um, even better. That's why that's why uh, we 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 decided like to use the video creatives here, and we just put like the given area and just show like to the audience the uh the situation how the weather condition changed that's that's like really important and uh, you know that uh, considering the fact uh, that we spread this content on twitter and considering the uh, platform features i mean that the twitter the platform uh mostly like look around platform and people um consume like th this content uh, uh, regarding what's going on around the world, of course. And, and, and that's like uh, uh, trendy stuff. I think like uh, you, uh, you, you, uh, you agree with me that uh, the hurricanes, the weather conditions or some like uh, tech stuff, that's like trendy stuff on Twitter, especially in the United States. That's why the communication strategy should be uh, based on the relevant me messages, of course. So the results which we've got on Twitter here, uh, 2x lower cost per install. Again, in the situation when the demand is going up, and we just uh, uh, and we just um, uh, need to adjust like our, our activities, and that's it. Um, up to uh, 3x uh, higher CTR. CTR and engagement rate determines uh, determine like the the uh, the consumption and determine the demand. Of course, that's like the the another um, the another option how to understand that the demand is going up. The the CTR like must probably is going up and the uh, the engagement rate is going up. The uh, sort like uh, part 
we've got like up to 5x lower cost per trial and up to 10x larger volume. That's like the crucial thing. And how um, it looks like in terms of the revenue, in terms of the return on spend. And you see that uh, in the normal conditions, when, when like nothing happens around the world, uh, even if we try to buy ads on Twitter or on Facebook, uh, we definitely uh, we will like definitely get the negative the negative return on ad spend because the the demand the demand is uh, negative it's not, it's absolutely like uh, streamlined to zero that's like literally but uh, in cases um, when the demand is going up you see that how the situation changes in reality and the uh, return on ad spend uh, become like positive in the given periods that's why uh you can use like this 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 approach there's that just uh just one of the examples how to lead and, and how to handle their campaigns on twitter and even in uh, the situation when uh, uh you realize that uh it's really complicated it's really tough to promote weather app the twitter helps can help you can help you to to do like this 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 stuff like properly so that's basically it from my side uh, regarding the Twitter activities, regarding the Facebook activities. I hope that uh, it could be useful for you. And uh, and basically, of course, uh, it should it should uh, it should be it should be implemented like from uh, from your side into your business activities, into your advertising activities. Just considering like uh, the fact that the Facebook and Twitter as the most efficient like platforms across the world, uh, especially in the tier one markets. I mean, United States, Canada, UK, some European markets, uh, Asian markets as well. Just take in, into account. And if you have some questions, please ask me. Uh, we do have a question uh, that was asked uh, on the Facebook. Uh, Pavel, what is the average cost per purchase Facebook ads for e-commerce business in a small markets such as Estonia? Cool, cool question. Uh, basically, it depends uh, on the product price and basically it depends uh, on your like a, um, unit, unit economy model. Because uh, uh, if you sell some, some high ticket products, I mean like the products uh, which cost like more than like 100 bucks or, or even, or even uh, more expensive, that means uh, that from business uh, uh, perspective, uh, you have to you have to align your advertising just to achieve your unit economy goals. And uh, if you if you have like uh, the just imagine you have like the the next like the next model, then uh, you can you can buy ads. Uh, with the return on ad spend approximately like two or two point five, that means that the the purchase should be not greater than fifty bucks. Uh, that's uh, that's really that really depends on the on the on the product price. But but in average in uh, United States, if you are, if you're talking about some emotion driven products, some stuff from Amazon, for instance. Uh, it could be it could be up to ten bucks, up to ten bucks per purchase. But considering the that fact that if we are talking about this some high ticket products, it should be it should be more. Thank you. And there is another question. Uh, please share your opinion. What do you do when the auction overheats uh, on Facebook and the cost of result and CPM increases by two three times? wait or try to change the big strategy the big strategy cool cool question that's that's a terrific question um regarding the uh, the how like auction works on facebook like basically uh, the the first important thing that you have to figure out why the 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 cpm the cpm is going up uh, it could be due to the marketing conditions uh market conditions because uh, because if the uh the competition um, on the on the market like is going up. Of course, it directly impacts your your CPM. The first option um, uh, on the table it could be to just to extend your your audience sample. That's like uh, the first the first one. 
The second one, if you see that the CTRs and engagement rates are going down, that means that the audience uh, saturation is coming. Uh, it, it could be the second, the, uh, the, second, like, the second reason why the CPM is going up. In this case, you have to, uh, you definitely have like two options on the, on the table. The first one is to change your, your creatives, to change your communication strategy, or to extend your audience sample. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, probably the question that uh, that is for me, um, have the uh, situation that the whole world is now influenced the ads uh, in general? I mean, is there ups and downs and which one works even ba better right now? Um, regarding um, Facebook or Twitter or, or Twitter platforms? I, uh, let, let's talk about Facebook. So basically, so basically, what what works what works well uh, on you know, in social media, like in general, yeah. Yeah, like in, considering the current situation that is happening right now, and as everybody is on, on online, and basically everybody is uh, stuck with all the information and how to, uh, like, of course, it's the targeting, the right targeting, but still, you kind of need to not miss uh, your audience. Cool, cool, cool. Cool question. So the, uh, the basically uh, uh, the situation around like what's going on in the world, uh, of course, it directly directly impacts the uh, the advertisers, the businesses, and so on. But we see the the positive uh, tendencies in the following verticals, like e-com vertical, of course, uh, that's like uh, growing like significantly. The second the second vertical is like trading vertical, because uh, <laughs> a few months ago. Uh, we like everyone like faced the, this situation with shares with stocks, uh, and the the market like was absolutely unstable, and the demand and the demand was on the top. I mean uh, the the traders, the investors, they they were like really really active, and uh, for some reasons uh, we increased like our pacing. I mean like daily pacing, daily spend for for some clients up to 10x. That's that's like how the uh, how the situation uh, impacted the trading vertical. The same situation in crypto vertical. Uh, Ecom is also continuing growing. Uh, gaming vertical is also like uh, it was booming, you know, because uh, people uh, people started uh, uh, started like use these mobile application games or or other stuff. And uh, the the industry the industry is continuing growing right now, and we we increased like our pacing almost almost twice, I think so. The the another like uh, the another product vertical verticals like uh, like maybe um, financial financial vertical that's like pretty stable, but the the most uh, the most impacted uh, ones. Um, that the the that's like must probably uh, those businesses who those businesses like uh, which sell like high ticket products, ecom uh, which sell like high ticket products, uh, they 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 were like they were like impacted like really impacted, and we see that the considerable like the considerable drop in terms of the 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 ecom ecom vertical and those businesses. Uh, SaaS like uh, software as a services or some services or some other businesses uh, which, which try to sell like high ticket products. Okay, thank you a lot. Uh, well, we seem like we don't have any questions yet. I just want to thank you for such an insightful conversation. Definitely lots to learn uh, from, from your talk. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, Pavel, for uh, mm -hmm. joining us today. Uh, and uh, also, we would really love to hear your feedback, and we're leaving uh, the link to the feedback form in the under the video in the comments. So please check it out too. Cool. Thank you again, and uh, see you soon in our event next events. Sure, sure, sure. I think so. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a good one, and stay healthy. Bye, bye.